neck pain, bilateral upper extremity numbness and weakness. T1 on the left, T2 in the middle, and uh, post-contrast sagittal, post-contrast axial. So do you think this is an epidural abscess, epidural hemorrhage, epidural lymphoma, intradural extramedullary meningioma, or an intramedullary ependymoma? Your answer, please. <laughs> I would do my Woody Woodpecker, but that's probably not it. So we're seeing a mixture. We're going to say uh, abscess, 20%, hemorrhage, 40 lymphoma, 36 And that's very good that I'm glad to see nobody's out at 5 there. That was, we'd have to take you aside if you were over there. Um, so we're going to, we're just going to say that this is epidural lymphoma. You got the space correct. I think that's the important thing. Like, again, 90% of this, what space am I in? Uh, we can go through. So with your clear dorsal dural margin being displaced, the cord then secondarily pushed by this thing. So that front right there tells you that this is epidural. And again, I only need to know about three things, right? So I got to think about tumor and pus and blood and next case. Um, and so you did that well. This is a large B cell lymphoma. A little bit of heterogeneous enhancement within it. So I think, you know, you know, given the correct history, abscess is not a bad second diagnosis because there is some heterogeneity following contrast. Blood pus tumor is the differential. Here's the blood side of it. This is acute epidural hemorrhage. So relatively iso on T1. Here's the dorsal dural margin pushing forward. Here's the cord being smashed. Very typical T2 pattern for very acute blood in the spine, epidural space. Basically close to high signal in CSF, but then sort of these septations and a little bit of low signal. So don't be put off. You know, this is not, you know, looking parenchymal blood, seeing the typical changes there. This is soft tissue blood. So you can get very iso, iso signal on, uh, in, in acute hemorrhage. You may not see that met hemoglobin. Here's another example of an epidural hemorrhage. Here's the dorsal dural margin being pushed back. It's off to the side, a little bit harder, a little bit of unenhanced high signal. It's nice when you see that, if you can separate that out from just being pushed epidural fat, and you can call that blood instead of that, and see it around the margin of the cord. This is pus. Uh, most of the time when we see isolated epidural abscesses, they're in the face of catheter, indwelling catheters. So here's a large lesion dorsal with very thick rind of enhancement and a telltale droplet of susceptibility artifact related to the gas. Probably not organism-related gas, but more catheter was there, and they took the catheter out. More pus, again, catheter-related. See, nice thick rind surrounding its central low signal tracks fluid otherwise on T2. And then tumor, other examples uh, of lymphoma, just uh, as an incidental. Here, when you see vertebra plana, certainly in kids, you know, Langerhans cell, uh, e.g. in the old days, uh, you think of that, but in adults, probably more common, something like lymphoma is going to give it another small tumor, really smashed down. Here, by looking at the body itself, doesn't help you other than to say it's pathologic, but you go to the axial view, you see all the soft tissue that's associated with it, dorsal element involvement, so you're in a tumor camp. All right, next case, 70.